Muy buenas tardes a todos. Me pueden ver en pantalla, me pueden escuchar bien. Si alguien me confirma. Gracias, Andrea. Muy bien. Eh, bueno, a todos, muy buenas tardes por su asistencia en la tarde de hoy. Equipos innovadores, eh, empresas y todos los que nos acompañan en la tarde de hoy, pues, en esta sesión del de, eh, programa de Ideatones, eh, del proyecto impulsado por BitLab Capatec y organizado por Escala Latam. En la tarde de hoy, pues, queremos conversar con ustedes, seguir un poco la dinámica de ayer. Eh, digamos que ayer tuvimos una, una muy buena participación de nuestro consultor, Jean-Marc Frangos. Él cubrió todo lo que, a, a, cubrió algunos ejemplos que me parece que fueron bastante eh, productivos y, y ayudaron muchísimo a algunos de ustedes para ayudarnos a definir ese problema, ese reto que estamos tratando de eh, resolver para las empresas ANCLA. Creo que con ejemplos podemos ilustrar un poco mejor eh, cómo vamos a, entonces, a eh, idear una solución, que es un poco lo que vamos a cubrir en la, part, en la, en la sesión de hoy. Para darles un poquito de, 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 de introducción a la sesión, realmente lo que queremos lograr es Darles las herramientas que ustedes necesitan, los factores, todas las aristas que deben considerar al momento de crear su pitch. Al final todos saben eh, que el 13 de marzo deberemos, de, de, deberán estar eh, entregando sus, sus videos, sus pitch de las soluciones que queremos proponer a las empresas ANCLA. Eh, Quisiera también aprovechar la ocasión que tengo, eh, que los tengo aquí presentes para informarles que en, esto, en esta semana la estamos utilizando para conversar con las empresas ANCLA y revisar todos los formularios y los videos que ustedes nos han hecho llegar. No tenemos retroalimentación de todas las empresas ANCLA al día de hoy, lastimosamente, pero de aquí a la próxima semana pues ya vamos a tener un poquito más de eh, conocimiento para ver las dinámicas. Ya se han seteado algunas reuniones para la próxima semana eh, pues con las empresas Angla, con algunos equipos, hay algunas que están un poquito retrasadas, pero eh, la idea es que todos puedan eh, eh, pues tener ese, ese contacto inicial eh, para escuchar de la empresa Angla sus, sus requerimientos. Entonces, eh, lo que queremos hacer en la sesión de hoy es darles la, las herramientas para ver ustedes qué necesitan tomar en consideración para crear su pitch. Es lo más importante. Eso lo vamos a cubrir hoy, lo vamos a cubrir un poco eh, jueves y viernes de la próxima semana también. Así que, bueno, eh, la tarde de hoy también la queremos hacer muy dinámica, igualito que ayer. Eh, si ustedes tienen preguntas, eh, por favor, nos las pueden hacer llegar utilizando el panel de la derecha en la sección de, de Q&A, de preguntas y respuestas. Y si alguno de ustedes se anima también a venir al escenario, y hacer preguntas puntuales, también lo pueden hacer, por favor, utilicen los controles que tienen en la parte inferior de la pantalla, la manito. Eh, y bueno, tal cual también, eh, vamos a repetir, eh, la, en la sesión de ayer, por ejemplo, nos quedamos después de la sesión para eh, contestar preguntas puntuales de cada uno, cada uno seguramente tiene eh, algunas cosas que compartir o tienen preguntas sobre sus retos, y en lo que les podamos ayudar, pues, estaremos disponibles. Eh, todo el equipo de Scala eh, y Jan Mark, pues, van, vamos a estar en, en las mesas. Eh, luego les vamos a explicar un poquito sobre esa dinámica para que podamos, eh, pues, atenderlos a todos. Así que, sin más, pues, damos inicio a la sesión eh, con Jan Mark Frangos, que nos acompaña desde Silicon Valley eh, en la tarde de hoy. Jan Mark, would you join us on stage? Here we go, Noemi. Thank you. Welcome, Jan Mark. Hello, everyone. It's all yours. All right, cool. Thank you. Thanks, Noemi. So glad we can uh, spend a few more minutes today. Uh, yesterday, we covered uh, a lot of uh, ground, particularly in trying to understand the problem and the challenge, the business challenge that the, uh, the companies are putting forward in this program. Um, hopefully, it was useful for you to hear the way I think about these business challenges and what questions I would be asking. In general, uh, in the discussions that we had after the event yesterday, my general impression is that you should make sure that you 
are never too shy about asking questions. Um, you know, companies are you know very able to decide what they respond to, what they don't respond to, but you should not stay away from asking questions about volume, about costs, about what's been done before, why it worked, why it didn't work. All these questions are very constructive and they're all for the benefit of the company in the end to give you more context and allow you to provide an even better solution. So that was kind of the, my reflection after the discussions yesterday. So today we're going to change the topic a little bit and um, I know Noemi told you that you are being asked to present a video of your solution. And I know that you are all in very different stages of a solution. Some of you are, you know, you have an existing startup, you have a product, it's already shipping, it's pretty much ready, it's more a matter of presenting it. Others, you're still creating the solution, you're still thinking about what is it you're going to be creating. So it's very different stages uh, that you might be at. However, in order to present yourself in the best possible way, those videos, I must say, are very classic ways to um, interact between startups and, um, and large corporates in the context of a program like this. Um, I was in charge of the incubator at BT, and we ran a program like that every quarter. And for 11, 12 quarters in a row, uh, we had exactly the same process as what you're going on through today, right? So, um, we selected, we offered, we, we launched the program with a number of questions or themes and startups would come to us with their ideas and the first point of contact was, you know, making, making contact on the website and then the second thing was um, explaining a bit more what the theme was about and the third step was creating that video where each team uh, explains clearly what they have uh, or what they will be building and why it's good, why it's different from the others, why it's answering that question. So what I would like to do today, so, so it's, a, it's a classic process, right? So don't think that it's out of the ordinary. Most uh, programs running with large numbers of startups and large numbers of corporates do it with the videos. It is, um, it is better use of everybody's time because you will put efforts into something that is a compact five minutes video and then the, the, the corporates will read those videos and then they will make contact with you depending on whether they like the video or not. So um, let's get into it. I prepared one slide today. That one slide um, should be useful for you to, um, <clears throat> to see what is going on and what I suggest because um, I have been receiving these, <laughs> these videos myself for a number of years and I can tell you it is super important to be very clear about what it is you're proposing. Because the biggest enemy when you do something like that is that someone watches your video and at the end of the five minutes, they're not very clear in their mind what is it you're proposing. So you don't have to be very complete about it. You don't have to give every single detail about what you're trying to do. But you have to be very clear that when people watch the video, they know what it is you're going to be proposing and they know where to place you in their sort of mental model of solutions, right? So here is my um, suggestion. We're going to go through this line by line and I'm going to tell you what I think is a good uh, idea. Next week, you're going to do another session, which is the art of the pitch. Now, the art of the pitch is slightly different. It is, you know, how you present yourself inside this video, inside each of these sections, or even, you know, moving the sections a little bit, uh, you, know, uh, on, uh, you know, from one to another, um, how do you pitch for maximum efficiency? But this is not about the style, this is about the content, and this is about what you should be preparing in the video and what a good structure of a video looks like. So the first thing is um, absolutely work on your branding. Even if you're not an existing startup, even if you're just a project team, you need to have a memorable name because this is, you know, the, it, ideally, the person who reads it and likes what you've said needs to remember what this project and what this team was called because they will, that's how they will try and refer back to you. So you need to have a name that is easy to remember. 
Um, and, and, you know, on the first few seconds, and I call it 10 seconds here, you need to say, hey, this is this name of project or company. Uh, you know, my name is so and so, or you don't have to say your name right away, but you can. And uh, ideally, put your name on the first slides because that video, by the way, a good practice for the video is going to be for you to be speaking in front of a slide, um, if at all possible. So, and there's many ways to do that. I'm not going to go into the technical details of how you do that. I'm sure it's not the first time you guys do videos. Um, and if it is, it's reasonably easy to find the tools. You can find that on Google. You can find that on YouTube. Uh, the tools to create videos are, are quite classic. But a good setup is for you to be speaking as a front person, you know, um, head, head and, and shoulders, um, in front of a slide. So uh, the first slide should have your title, your name. Um, and if possible, you should have what I call a single summary sentence of what you do, um, you know, so, you know, this is project, you know, uh, butterfly. And what we do is we improve the way people find information on the internet. Just one sentence. I mean, it's obviously, it's not going to be that sentence. It's yours, but something that is a simple sentence that already puts people in the mind of, okay, this is what they're going to talk about. Good. Okay. Now, the next thing is, of course, referring to the business problem that you are solving because many of these companies have uh, proposed multiple challenges, multiple business problems. So they need to know which problem it is you're solving. And I would recommend in 20 seconds, which is you know, you know, enough time, you put up the, 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 the problem in written form behind you and you say, this is the problem we're going to be solving. Um, and then uh, you move on to the next thing. And the next thing is the specific points you're going to be addressing inside the challenge. Now, yesterday, if you remember, we talked about getting more information. You're pulling information from them as much as you can so that you can find those pain points they're, um, they're still struggling with inside that particular challenge. And this is what you're going to be developing in this, um, in this small section. This is all about making the company understand that you have understood their problem. And you are, um, you know, you empathize with their uh, pain points. You, you, you understand where the pain is for them and you're able to address it. I mean, if, they, if they're reassured after the first minute that you have understood what it is their problem is, then it's going to be good. Now, I understand that not all of you will have had time to speak to the company, so it might not be a full understanding. And I would um, suggest that if you're not sure about the problem, then don't do too much of that because the worst case scenario is you, you're trying to address a problem that is not really a problem for them. And, and that, is, that is bad. So just if you're not sure, don't do it. But if you know already what pain points you're gonna be addressing, say it there. Now, the next thing is of course, the most important part of your video, it is your proposed solution. And that really depends on you know, what your solution is, right? But you should, you know, and that's what you're going to be covering next week in the art of the pitch, you know, how to present your solution. Uh, but assuming it is software, in five minutes, you hardly have time to do a demo, right? So you'll probably have to describe what the software does, why it's a good solution for them, what are the parts of the solution. Um, and, and, you know, you, you might be able to, explain also how they're going to be able to deploy it. Um, this is an important part that people often forget. How easy is it for me to deploy the solution inside my company? Does it require a lot of training for my users, for instance? I mean, these are things that you need to cover in the proposed solution. What is it? What does it do? Is it easy to deploy? And uh, will you have a lot of training? Is it something that requires a lot of adaptation of what they do? the less adaptation the better nobody is interested in trying to do a lot of work to ingest a new solution so that's the proposed solution that's the major chunk it's about two minutes maybe a little bit more if you don't want to spend too much time on the specific points above uh, you could do between two and three minutes on your solution now the next thing is you absolutely have to say why it is unique now it might be completely visible when you describe what your solution is, and you might not need to have a specific 30 seconds on why it's unique. But I always recommend that you put yourself in the shoes of 
the person who's going to receive it, and he might receive multiple propositions about this challenge. What makes your proposition unique? If you know already a bit about the competition, no, I'm not talking about the competition inside the program here. I'm talking about the competition with existing solutions that might be existing outside. Then it, it's a good idea for you to say, wait, we know this and that and that company exists. And you don't have to mention 20 companies. You can mention two or three of the top names. And you say, but we're different because X, Y, and Z, right? And, and normally people use a, a two by two graph and they find two axes. Uh, a bit like consultancy type um, uh, presentation, and they plot the two or three competitors on a graph and they plot themselves at the top right of the graph. And it, it helps position why you're different. That is quite important in convincing people that it's worth their time speaking to you about it. Now, the next section is the business model. And you might or might not know yet how you will charge, but you need to be um, you know, clear about whether you're you're planning, I mean, the, the main constituents there is, is it a, a license fee that you're going to be charging? Is it a SaaS model where it's a rent or a lease model uh, where they're going to be paying per unit or per month or per user? Um, what type of charging mechanism are you, going to, uh, are you going to suggest? And then is there ongoing extra charges or one-off extra charges? So are there, um, you know, will they, will you be charging for integration in their existing systems, um, you know, how long might that take, and then will you be charging for anything extra uh, like maintenance fees or anything like that. I mean, the how you will charge, even if you don't give your prices, I'm not suggesting you say this is how much it will cost, but you should say this is the structure of how we we're planning to charge for this. And you can leave it reasonably open because if it's your, if it's a project where you're just creating the solution, you can say we're thinking about charging that way. Uh, you know, depending on the discussion with the customer, we might decide to slightly change this model. We're open to discussion about that. But do mention something about how you're planning to charge because it shows that you have some maturity in the way you think about it. It's not just a technology wonder of some sort. You've got some commercial mind behind it. Next one is why is your team able to solve this? And what resource can you dedicate to me as a customer? So that's an important one. And typically what people do there is they have a slide with a few headshots of the members of the team. And under each of the headshots, they say, you know, this is the company that we worked with before. This person was the CTO of this company. That person was the CFO of that company. Or that person, you know, did this particular, uh, you know, university and, you know, is a PhD of this or it doesn't matter. I'm giving you extreme examples, but um, it's good to have uh, the, the heads of three or four of the, of the teams. And if it's only one person, it's fine too. Uh, but it's important to give a little bit of context as to what you've done before and why is it you're able to solve that problem. You're not coming out of the last rain. Uh, you're obviously you know, someone with, uh, with experience on the subject. So you need to make that clear. Um, and the second part of that question is, what resource can you dedicate to me? So if this works and I do decide to accept your solution, um, how long is it going to take uh, uh, to put it in place? Will that be your team, uh, a part of your team? Are you going to dedicate one person, two, three people to me for six months, for two weeks? What is it? So that's the sort of thing that, again, is very useful to put. It's a very short, it's a couple of sentences, all of that. So don't overdo it, but uh, do present the team and do present the, you know, what resource you're planning to put to work on this particular project. Now, one before last, how do we engage and what is your process for POC? This is a call to action. This is for you to say, hey, you know, if you're interested in this particular thing, we're ready to engage on a proof of concept with you or a trial with you, or uh, we can give you a demo, or you, know, you need to have something that is an engagement point where people can say, okay, well, that looks like a tangible next step forward. I wanna go ahead and uh, you know, you know, reach out to these guys to do it. So um, that's, you know, that's where you can say these things. Uh, never leave a presentation like that on a video by just presenting your solution and saying, that's it. 
um, you need to say, and what do you think about it? And what do you want to do with it? Um, so that's where you, you, you propose the engagement model that you think is best for you. It could be a POC, it could be a demo, it could be a discussion, it could be different things, but you have to ask that question in inter interrogative way, okay? So that you, you kind of engage the, um, the, the, the listener. And the last thing I would suggest is you put back the first slide you had with your title, your name, and that one sentence summary. And you finish the, the presentation by, and once again, my name is X, Y, and Z from X company or X project, and we are solving the problem of, you know, how people find information on the internet, you know, my classic sentence, right? And that's the way you finish, and that way people remember your name, people remember the company, and what you are all about. And that's enough, you need to fit all this in five minutes. To be honest with you, five minutes is generous, because a lot of these videos, they're being asked to package in three minutes, so you're being given two extra minutes. So that means that you have enough to put together something that is substantial, uh, especially in when you explain your proposed solution, uh, you're able to do that well. But, you know, in this video, uh, you can experiment with it. Uh, some people do it just in one go. They can just do one recording. Um, most people actually do it in multiple takes, and then they just edit and assemble the video together to make it look cool. Um, and I'm sure all of you are really, you know, able and keen to do that. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to uh, try and help you. We, we, we have a bit more time between today, next week, that we can, uh, we can look at your pitch. We don't have to look at the video immediately, but for some of you that already know what you're gonna be uh, pitching, we can start talking about that uh, today and talking about that now, actually. So with that, I am going to uh, get it, give it back to uh, you know, the, the floor now and, uh, or, or to Noemi to um, guide us to what we are going to be doing next, because I'm, I'm available now to answer more of the questions if anything is okay. The first thing we could do, Noemi, is we could just ask the audience if there's any questions on what I've said so far. Absolutely. Thank you, John Mark. That was uh, great information. Actually, it's been years of experience from your side to listen to different innovators across different countries, and you have put together the the highlights, the the really key points for uh, for the all the innovators that are joining us this afternoon for them to consider uh, on their videos. So that this is great information. Thank you so much. I'm going to switch to Spanish real quick. I'm going to let them know that we're, we'll be sharing this information via email. Um, a todos, bueno, les, les, les comentaba que, bueno, Jan Mark tiene eh, muchos años de experiencia en Estados Unidos eh, haciendo este tipo de, recibiendo este tipo de, 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 de innovadores y sus, sus pitch, sus, sus, sus soluciones y demás eh, en estos ambientes. Y, y realmente creo que en este, en este slide hay capturada mucha información valiosa para ustedes. Como mencionó el video que, eh, digamos que, como lo, la, el siguiente milestone, el siguiente hito que, que vamos a estar, que, que ustedes deben cubrir es precisamente pues crear un video de hasta cinco minutos. No tiene que ser de cinco minutos, puede ser un poco menos. Como dice Jean Marc, en otros lugares pues les dan menos tiempo, tres minutos si acaso, pues para presentar todo lo que tienen que presentar. Así que un poco eso es lo que queríamos cubrir hoy. Eh, estamos abiertos a preguntas, si desean eh, postearlas en el panel de la derecha, está, está abierto para preguntas, si tienen alguna duda con relación al contenido que compartió Jan Mark hoy, de igual forma, se los vamos a hacer llegar por correo electrónico, y también le voy a pedir al equipo para que compartamos la grabación de hoy, eh, que es importante, pues para que la tengan, la tengan disponible. Entonces, nos, igual, eh, no, no veo preguntas, no sé si, si todo está súper claro, pero bueno, igualito nosotros nos vamos a quedar, eh, cuando cerremos la sesión, nos vamos a quedar en las mesas y nos vamos a ubicar en una de, de las mesas de las esquinas, una de las grandes. Y bueno, queremos que de pronto los, los que desean tener alguna información adicional o quieran conversar con nosotros, eh, se acerquen uno a uno para poder conversar. Eh, aquí tenemos una pregunta que si nos podrían indicar si tendremos oportunidad de tener las entrevistas con las empresas. 
previo a hacer el pitch? Esa es una buena pregunta. Estamos haciendo todo lo posible por coordinar estas reuniones lo antes posible. Eh, como ustedes, bueno, hay, algunos, hay algunas empresas ancla que ya se han eh, manifestado eh, con relación a disponibilidad y demás. Hay algunas que todavía pues, están por comunicarse con nosotros y en eso estamos. Eh, así que en cuanto tengamos más noticias, ya algunas reuniones se, han, se están agendando y, eh, y luego de eso entonces eh, tendremos más noticias con respecto a las empresas ancla que faltan por, por definir. Con respecto al NDA y a la asignación del mentor, ya eso ocurrirá a partir de la próxima semana una vez ya conformemos a todos los equipos. Algo que debe suceder y solamente para ponerlo también en perspectiva. Eh, digamos que la empresa Ancla va a tener la oportunidad de ampliar un poco en sus retos. Entonces, creo que en ese momento es importante que ustedes tengan también la, pues, ustedes se pongan a pensar, porque hay muchos de ustedes que han aplicado a múltiples retos. Entonces, si es el caso, entonces ustedes mismos pueden también eh, pues, evaluar si ese es un reto en el que realmente quieren participar o de pronto en lugar de cinco retos que aplicaron se quedan con dos. Y una vez tengamos ya esos equipos formalizados de los que van a trabajar con cada empresa ancla, entonces es cuando se firman los NDAs y se asignan a los mentores en base pues, a las capacidades y a las necesidades de cada uno. Eso es un poco lo que para contestar estas dos preguntas que tenemos aquí en pantalla. No sé si hay alguna otra más que, que quisieran compartir o si hay alguien que quiere venir a la audiencia y preguntar, también es posible. Y si no, pues también podemos pasar a las mesas y ustedes se acercan individualmente pues, a conversar con nosotros en, en caso de que tengan preguntas individuales. Mark, I think this question is for you. Uh, we have one question. In the part of the solution, if you have images or videos of the model or the proof of concept, is it recommended to show it or if it's better to always be the person talking? So is the question about showing a, showing a video of a demo, is that the question? That's the question, yes. The, it can be a good idea if you think you have uh, a demo that you can do really quickly, um, but it can turn into something negative if you go too deep into trying to show all the screens of your demo, um, because you, you don't have time in five minutes to do that. Um, if you have a working prototype or a working product, it's a good idea to show a couple of demos while you're speaking. You run the demo behind you while you're speaking, And what that does is that people realize that there's something that's existing already there, right? So that's, that's a very positive. Otherwise, you can just do screenshots. Screenshots are also pretty good. Mm -hmm. They help people realize what the user interface looks like. It looks friendly. It looks easy to use. Uh, screenshots are cool. You don't have to run through a real demo. But showing the product when you have it is always a good idea. But spending too long on it is not a good idea because you want to keep a little bit of mystery behind what is going on with this product, and you want to be a, you want this video to be a teaser, not a class, not an explanation. So that's what that, that's what's going on with the um, with with showing the um, the product itself. Excellent, and and I think it, it it makes sense. I mean, if you're, it's always good to always, to to keep to keep yourself on screen while you have either the demo or a screenshot or whatever it is, a, a, a draft or prototype of whatever it is uh, in the background. Okay, great. Exactly. And by the way, when you do your video and you are speaking in front of the video, uh, you need to not be in the center, right? I mean, you know that, but that's a, that's a classic thing. You need, to, you need to take a position on the video where you're a little bit smaller and you're on the side like this, and the majority of what you're talking about happens behind you. Um, you can use a green screen, but you know many software now allow you to do it without a green screen. So um, that's that's a, a good way of doing it. You don't have to buy expensive equipment. This is not about you know making a, a video you know Hollywood type production, but uh, you you can just um, you can just use the uh, the camera of your uh, uh, of your uh, laptop or your PC. Um, some people actually do the videos on their smartphones. And it's it's also quite quite acceptable because you can do just a video and then you have the slides and you can insert the video file from the from the uh, the smartphone on the side. So all of these things are entirely feasible. Excellent. All right. 
uh, we have another question. In this case, the pitch is aimed at an anchor company that has an economic interest. Is it convenient to talk about the economic interest of anchor companies? Uh, what, what do we mean by economic interest? Is it convenient to talk about the economic interest of anchor company? Uh, to, to say a bit more about that, Octavio, if you don't mind, because I, I don't really understand what you mean. Octavio, do you want to join us on stage? <laughs> or type a few more sentences, if you don't mind. Right. He said yes. Okay, great. Uh, you will get Octavio Baja. Te va a salir una una un mensajito y le pones que sí, que si quieres unirte al stage. Y prendes tu cámara y micrófono también. Thank you. Do you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, Welcome. Fine. Nice to meet you. Very, very nice your your, your presentation. Uh, well, actually, in all these process have to be uh, to go with a specific kind of company, which is company uh, like banks in the financial systems, and also company in the logistic systems. So the the, the proposal we're making it is it has to be with something that these companies need for their own business. So we have to do a pitch about what we want to to win, what's our business model, or we have to to put attention of what 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 is the interest of a bank, why is it this a business for them, uh, sort of. That that's the question. That's a, that's a good question. So yes, I'm, you're right to point that out. I was not specific enough when I explained it, but the third section of this video is when I say. What are the specific points you're addressing inside the challenge? This is when you have a chance to say, by the way, my solution is going to help you do this or that. Because the pain yes. point might be they have too high a cost to operate one of their processes, right? So the benefit to them is what you need to articulate at that point. What is, okay. the, what is the benefit for the company? What are they going to get out of your project? Uh, yes. Not just a new technology. It's got to be something better than that. It's got to be... A, the solving a problem with a cost, solving a problem with a process that doesn't work, solving a problem with better interactions with customers. That's where you articulate that. It's right at the, around your solution, either at the front end of it or at the bottom end of your solution. You need to have a section that talks about that. And that's what I meant by specific points you're addressing inside the challenge. Uh, okay. you, you phrased it better than I did, Octavio. It is about customer benefit. It is about the economic interest of the customer. What is it going to do for you? Is it going to reduce your cost by 20%, by 50%? I mean, if you know these things already because you have deployed it in other companies and you have uh, tangible uh, you know, measures that you can talk about, these are fantastic selling points, as you know. You know it's, it's, okay. it's what you need to put Thank in. You. Absolutely. Gracias, Octavio. A ti. Gracias, Naomi. Okay, tenemos más preguntas. Estas preguntas están bien interesantes. Eh, bueno, y como les dije, vamos a esperar un ratito a ver si se nos, si alguien más quiere preguntar, pero si no, bueno, vamos a volver a las mesas igual eh, en un ratito, en caso de que tengan preguntas ya individuales. All right. Looks like we don't have any more questions, young Mark. Let's go on. We're going to go ahead and go to the tables. I just, I just let them know that. So and when, when we circulate the little slide that, that uh, you've got, Noemi, I'm going to update it because uh, I realized that from Octavio's questions that it wasn't clear enough. So I'm going to make it clear in the, in the slide that people need to do what Octavio said, which is to articulate the economic benefit. What, is, what does it mean for me in terms of the benefit for the solution? Uh, Excellent. That's really good one. Great information. Okay. And, uh, y para todos también, les vamos a hacer llegar el slide, como dice Jean Marc, le vamos a hacer la, a, eh, llegar la grabación de esta sesión también y la de ayer, en caso de que no pudieron participar. Eh, y bueno, ya saben, eh, un poco lo, lo que estamos esperando en esta semana es eh, pues tener las reuniones con las empresas Ancla, tener su retroalimentación. Y bueno, al final lo que queremos es que ustedes tengan las herramientas para grabar esos videos 
eh, y que tengas, pues, que sean muy, muy específicos en lo que, en lo que, pues, en, en su solución. Así que creo que eso es un poco lo que, el, el objetivo eh, del programa al final. Y recuerden, bueno, que estos, estos videos más adelante les, les vamos a compartir, se, se estarán publicando para todas las empresas Ancla para que los vean y, y bueno, tengan eh, bastante exposición de parte de ustedes porque obviamente estos son innovaciones que están saliendo, pues, de aquí y de este programa de Datones de Panamá y, y bueno, estamos probando que en Panamá se pueda hacer innovación abierta y que hay tremenda participación con, con muchísima capacidad por parte de ustedes. Así que, eh, si no hay más preguntas, entonces, pues, nos vemos en las mesas a los que lo desean y si no, entonces, bueno, estarán recibiendo correos la próxima semana con los enlaces de acceso para las sesiones de jueves y viernes, que como mencionaba, bueno, vamos a estar cubriendo un poco más de los, estos elementos para prepararlos eh, para, esas, para ese video que queremos hacer. Así que a todos muy buenas tardes y nos vemos la próxima semana. Young Mark, we're going to go now to the, to the tables. Sounds good. And I have just sent on the general chat here the file that we're talking about, which is my single slide. So people can okay. hopefully get it from, uh, from the chat here. Perfect. Yeah, we will say, I just told them that we were, we're going to be circulating this via email yeah. and also the recording of the session. Exactly. Today's session and yesterday's. Okay. So, and then we will see each other again uh, next Thursday. Well, thank you so much, John Mark. See you soon. See you, see you in a little bit. See you in the okay. okay.